and gentlemen, people of the internet. Just got back from downtown Cameron, Toronto. Got something exciting in the bag. Let's open it up. All right, so we'll start with the little box. Here's the basic adapter that came with the camera. Apparently these are free right now for the, uh, they come with the camera for free right now, but Canon's gonna be charging for these adapters in the future, which I don't understand. They should give the basic adapter away for free all the time. And then here is the bad boy right here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand without dropping the box. Uh, no, we're gonna have to do this one. Okay, so there we go. Canon EOS R. Now, before I open this box, I just wanna make a statement here. There's a lot of weirdness on the internet right now with, with Sony shooters bashing Canon and Canon shooters bashing, bashing Sony. And you know, everyone's like, Sony's better, Canon's better, all this stuff, you know what? Honestly, I've been in the industry 14 years and there's no such thing as best camera. It just doesn't exist. Every camera has its positives, has its negatives. Everything's got its flaws. So there's no best camera. There's only the best camera for you. And that's what this is about, right? So let's not get carried away and start bashing the other camp just because we can. It's not about that. We're all photographers. We all use tools to create photos. I mean, ultimately, what creates a good photo is what's between your ears. You're the photographer. The camera is simply a tool, and whichever tool you use to express your creativity, that's the tool that's best for you. So let's not judge other people based on the equipment that they use. All cameras are fantastic for you if that's what you need to create, what you want to create. So I just want to say that before I get into this. Now let's get into this. So shall we open up the adapter first? <laughs> no, you guys want to see what's in here. Okay, let's do this. There we go. Paperwork. And we got some cables. I'm not going to talk about the specs of this camera. I'm definitely going to have to read that because that is all over the internet. If you guys want to see that, you can just Google it. And look at this. It comes with a charger. That's nice. And this is new. I have not bought a camera where they usually it's just cardboard. Here we got some plastic. Okay, what's this? This looks like a. Oh, this must be a pouch for the lens. Okay. Lens hood. Camera strap. And I guess this is the good stuff down here at the bottom. Okay, so we'll open up the lens second. Let's take a look at the camera. Anything else in the box? Okay. Here it is. All right, let's put this in the shade so you guys can see it without any blowouts. <laughs> One-handed troubles, photographer problems. Oh, there it is. There it is, and I'm filming this on a Sony, uh, Canon G7X Mark II, but this will be my future vlogging camera. And that certainly looks nice. Put this down on the table here. There we go. So I'm curious to see how this touch bar feels and how it's actually used. This is fantastic. Front facing screen. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so how does it feel in hand? Hmm. Feels different. I'm gonna judge it here based on the 5D Mark III because that's what I'm used to using. See this feels be I'm gonna shake it again. <laughs> that feels be be this. It's kind of like the Sony A7 III. It feels a little more plasticky. It feels a little more. I don't. I don't want to. Well, yeah. It feels a little more toy-ish. This feels. Like it feels metal. This is metal construction apparently. It just has been in the box the whole time. It's not very cold. It feels, uh, oh, it feels different. Even the, the paint finish feels different. I'm not complaining though. It uh, feels nice. Okay. And if you want to see them side by side. So in terms of size, the EOS R is definitely smaller. 
it feels a lot lighter in the hand. The grip is a lot less beefy. To me anyway, it's better than the Sony a7 III because I just I want something bigger to hold on to. But like I said, it's completely subjective. It's, it's, it's about whatever tool is best for you and what you like to hold. It's gonna take a little bit of getting used to in terms of holding this. And here's the view from above. So you can take a look, stack them up like this. So the EOS R is definitely a lot smaller. Here you can definitely see it. The grip size, the, I'm not, like initial impressions, I'm not loving the way it feels in the hand. But it's definitely something I can get used to, but it's not, uh, I guess because of the size restrictions. It just doesn't feel the same as this. But I am liking the lighter weight. But these new lenses are so big and heavy, what's the point of having a lighter camera if you're just gonna put massive lenses on the front anyway? It's not really gonna save you much weight. Okay now, so let's open up this lens. This is the 24 to 105 kit lens. I used to own a 24 to 105 and then I sold it because I picked up the uh, 24 to 70, but I always regretted it. Oh, there's a lock on there, that's nice. It's such a versatile lens. I figured, you know what, I'd sell the 24 to 70 because once I put this on the camera with the high ISO capabilities, I'm never gonna use the uh, 24 to 70 ever again until I buy the 28 to 70 F2, which will happen. So let's put this on the camera and see what that looks like. Ooh, that's a nice solid, there's no, uh, there's no wiggle or shake in there. That's nice and solid once it's on there. Yeah, the lens is plastic too, it's plastic. Hmm. Everything just feels plastic on this. I'm kind of, well, I'm, I'm happy about that because I don't want the weight, but uh, everything's just, it's too plasticky feeling for me to be honest. It just, everything just feels like a toy. I mean, that was one of my gripes with the a7 III as well. It just felt plasticky. This feels like a nice metal body. Someone, someone says something bad to you, you just hit them with the camera and the camera's fine. This, I don't know, I feel like if you dropped it, pieces would chip and snap off and break off and it just doesn't feel like, uh, like a metal camera does. But in terms of appearance, definitely looks good. Let's see, I guess I gotta turn this thing on and it's an EVF, so to turn it on, I need a battery. All right, let's see if this thing has any charge in it. Not a big fan of the on-off switch on this side of the camera. I'd much prefer it over here somewhere so you can operate it with one hand. Charge battery pack. <laughs> I guess we're not gonna test the camera yet. Okay guys, I'm gonna charge up this battery and then I'm gonna put different lenses on here with the adapter and test that out. Uh, these batteries charge pretty quick, probably 45 minutes and it'll be fully charged. It's actually dead uh, out of the box. So uh, let's charge that up and I'll be right back. Okay guys, while that battery charges, let me give you a little bit of a pro tip. I got the a7 III when it first came out. I got this on the day it came out. Young photographers, I strongly recommend you find somebody who works at a local camera shop who's gonna be there for a while and you become friends with them. For me, I've been buying my cameras off the same guy since the beginning. I bought my first 20D off a guy named Sheldon when he worked at one camera store and then he left and works at a different camera store now, Downtown Camera in Toronto. And I buy all my equipment off of him. And whenever these cameras come out, I just call him you know, a couple of months in advance. And I say, hey Sheldon, put me down for pre-order on this camera, that camera, this equipment, that equipment. And as soon as it comes out, he gives me a call. We've built up that loyalty. I only buy from him. And uh, he treats me really well. So that's a nice pro trip, pro tip. So uh, for you guys who are just starting out, find a guy who works at a camera shop, become friends, and just always buy your stuff off of him and just you know give him loyalty. He'll give you loyalty or her or whatever the case may be. And uh, yeah, that's my bit of advice to you while the camera battery charges. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got a bunch of batteries from my 5D Mark III. And the beautiful thing about this Canon system is the batteries are interchangeable. So I'm gonna pop one in here and let's get her going. Okay, so here we go. Throw you in here. We have life. Okay, oh, that looks nice. Okay, listen to the shutter sound. It's very different sounding compared to a 5D Mark III. It just doesn't sound as a... Uh, it's clanky. Even the uh, the Sony a7 III shutter sounds better than this. Nice. Okay, so it works. Let's see what this back screen looks like. Oh wow! Woo! 
I don't know what the frame rate is, but that is nice. It definitely, I mean, from my experience with the Sony a7 III, this feels like it updates a lot faster. It feels like it's like 60 frames a second. I don't know, maybe there's a setting on the Sony a7 III I didn't have properly, but this just seems like, let's see if I can, I don't know if you can tell there, but it's, it's updating pretty fast. Wow, that's impressive. And through the viewfinder, it definitely does look better than the Sony a7 III. I don't know if you can see anything in there. If I'm not mistaken, I think the, the resolution here in the viewfinder is a little bit higher. But as, as like the Sony a7 III was the first mirrorless camera I used with an EVF, and this is the second. And uh, how do I change focus points? I missed my joystick already, like first thing. I'm trying to change my focus points, I missed that. I don't like the sound of the shutter, but it is quiet for those of you who are wondering. Um, I do like this. I really like this because I, I don't want to look at the back of the screen when I'm shooting a wedding or event. I just want to be able to look down and all the information is there. Okay, so now, adapter time. This is the, uh, the basic adapter. So I'm just going to adapt this camera to use EF lenses. Oh, that's a lot of packaging. There's more packaging protecting this adapter than there was in that box protecting the camera. I don't know if you see that, but uh, that's one thing I noticed. Okay, and the adapter comes in a little pouch and more plastic. <laughs> wow, they really protected this adapter from being dropped and broken. And that camera was in a box, just a little bit of plastic. So there's the shiny new adapter right there. Looks good. And you guys have probably all heard about this already, but there's a but there's a little curtain that comes down when you turn the camera off, which protects the sensor from dust. I just turned the camera off. Did it come down? Yeah, there it goes. It was quiet. I didn't hear it. Okay, so now let's mount this adapter. That's nice and tight, and we're gonna go with the 50 millimeter 1.4 Sparkle Edition. Cause I know this lens. I use it a lot. So let's see. How fast are you? Close, far, close, far, close, far. It's decent, it's decent. Close. It's not as fast as I would like, but it's decent. You can definitely use that. All right, now let's test this other lens out. When I sold the Sony a7 III, the photographer selling it was selling this 35 millimeter F1.4. L version 2 and I've been looking for this lens but it's not a lens that I would use all the time so I didn't want to pay full price for it so I found one used and I got a great deal and uh, I'll make a video in the future about buying used lenses and the ups and downs to that so this is off put this one on here <laughs> definitely you can feel the weight of this lens pulling you down okay let's see close far now oh, this one's faster I guess it is an L lens, the other one was just a uh, regular. Okay, so that's definitely focusing a lot faster. Okay, happy with that. And I love this 35 millimeter perspective. I was a telephoto shooter for the longest time, but I've somehow converted into a wide angle shooter and I much prefer the wide angles now. Okay, so lens test works, works with EF lenses, the older ones and the newer ones. I'll do, uh, I'll do some more videos where I test more stuff out. This is just initial impressions. So this is where you attach the camera strap, and of course there's no jingly bits, which I do like, so it's a little quieter when you're walking around. It's not gonna shake and jingle. Okay, now let's try this out. I've got a 580EX RT here. Let's pop this on here. I know when I was using the Sony a7 III with Canon lenses, I had to use the flash on manual. So let's test this out, and let's go here, mode ETTL. So everything should work. And you should have to find the flash exposure compensation button. But for now, let's just take a picture. And there we go, it fired and exposed correctly. Yep. Okay, so that's good. ETTL works with everything. And uh, I guess this isn't an old flash. It's a 600 EXRT, so it's old, but not super old. All right, good, so that works. So this I didn't know about, I just saw this in the menu. You can actually set this to a 1.6 crop factor. So if you're using using a telephoto lens, you can uh, 
you can use a smaller part of the sensor and get more range, which is kind of cool. Or you can just crop and post, it's up to you. But uh, I didn't know that was there, so that's a, a cool little bonus. Here's another feature I really like. So notice the square. That's the autofocus square here. And we can uh, go to menu and we can change that from normal to small. And I like that a lot better. Uh, I was running into problems before with hands coming down in front of someone's face and the camera focusing on the hands. Because I like to focus recompose, spot focus recompose, that's my style of shooting. You know, there's eye autofocus and all that stuff, which is better for events and things. But for me, for what I do, that's something I love. So I like the fact that I can change the size of that focus point. And here's another interesting setting. This is a VF display format. So you can have it have the image display in the full display or part of the display. So for me, because, I don't know, let's see if I can show you this. I have deep set eyes, so I like to remove the eye cup from the camera and this, oops, hit the shutter button, but this doesn't come off. This uh, eye cup is here permanently, doesn't come off, can't remove it, which is a bit of a pain for me because I like to take these things off. But with this menu setting, if I can't see the full image in the display because of my deep set eyes, I can make it a little bit smaller. So that's pretty cool. I'm glad Canon thought about that. That's, that's awesome. Kudos to Canon on that. I like it. And here we go. For those of you who want to see what's in the menu, I'm just going to go through it quick. You can pause it to stop the video whenever you want. Okay, so first impressions, first impressions, first impressions. The camera definitely feels really plasticky. It does feel really light and plasticky. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it would feel more, a lot of the people were saying it feels very DSLR-like-ish. They say it feels like a DSLR in your hands with an EVF. And you know what? I don't know where they came from with that opinion because this is a DSLR. It feels like a DSLR. <laughs> this is not a DSLR. Or it, it is a digital SLR for sure, but it doesn't feel like, oops. <laughs> Thank God it's a 5D Mark III. You can take a beating. Um, this is a DSLR, but doesn't feel like a DSLR. It definitely feels, uh, even, even this, this rubberized grip here, this is a lot grippier. They look very similar, but uh, this feels a little, like those little grippy pieces are really smoothed out, like you took sandpaper to it and took out a lot of the ridges. So it feels a little more slippery in the hand, but the plastic you feel I'm not a fan of. I guess, you know what, with these, uh, Full frame mirrorless cameras getting smaller and smaller and smaller and lighter and lighter and lighter. We're going to get a lot more plastic construction and it's going to save on cost. You know, and these cameras are kind of, I don't want to say they're cheap. I mean, it's still expensive, but I mean, compared to a 1DX, it is cheap. So I guess they're trying to save on money there. So uh, I understand why, but I thought this camera had a magnesium alloy body. And if it does, it certainly doesn't feel like it in, in hand. Uh, the viewfinder, the EVF. I mean, I've only used two full frame cameras and this one is amazing. Uh, I love it. The back screen seems to refresh really fast, which is amazing. I like that. Um, I'm not a fan of the mode dial thing. I, I don't like the fact that you have to hit the mode button and then turn the dial. Mm, I would rather have the pictures and you can just turn the mode dial to what you want. I mean, why did they change that? I don't know. Off on button on the other side. Why not just, if you're going to redesign a new camera, might as well put it in a more convenient place. I will play around with this camera a little more. Obviously, I haven't shot any real photos with it. I haven't done any photo shoots. I'm going to do that. This was just an impressions video right out of the box. How do I feel about it? I'd say overall, I like it. I'm excited to start playing with it. I want to start testing it out and shooting some photos. And then when I'm ready to give you guys a proper review, I will give you an actual review based on my real world experience and not just reciting facts that I find on the interwebs. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you like that. Peace out. Don't forget to make friends with your local camera store guy because that's important if you're a photographer, you want to do that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.